Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. It's a very cool and comfortable day here at Hinokicho Park next to Tokyo uh, Midtown. Uh, quite a busy day at the park uh, because it's so nice outside. Uh, Tokyo Midtown is quite a big and busy place. Uh, there are a couple of office towers located here. Uh, one is the headquarters for the Fujifilm company. Uh, the other is the headquarters for the Konami company. Uh, also here is the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, uh, the large uh, Midtown shopping mall, uh, a daycare center and kindergarten, a pet store, a food court, and a lot of other shops and stores. And on nice days like today, uh, when the weather is agreeable, uh, everyone likes to come here to the park to enjoy their lunch. There are a lot of kids at the park today, uh, though school is back in in Japan. Uh, and public school, public school kids have been going back to school on their normal schedule since July or so. There are a lot of international schools in this part of Tokyo, and international schools, uh, for the most part, are following a hybrid schedule, which means uh, kids are attending a couple of days of uh, school and then, uh, or might be uh, uh, studying from home on other days. So. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a lot of kids here who are running around and playing. I guess they don't have a lot of uh, studying to do at home when they're here. And uh, a little bit noisy uh, from time to time. Uh, today's video is going to be about a vintage Japanese lens rather than a vintage Japanese camera. And this particular lens is, I, I think, my favorite uh, of all the lenses which are made here in Japan. And when you consider how many lenses have been made here over the years, that's uh, saying quite a lot. Uh, this particular lens is the Canon 35mm f2 concave lens, which is one of the 30, early 35mm uh, uh, f2 lenses in the FD mount. Now, Canon produced a wide variety of 35mm f2 lenses in this mount. Uh, the first versions were the concave versions. Uh, these were replaced by a convex version. And the last one was a, uh, the new FD version, which uh, a lot of people think is the best of the 35mm f2 lenses. Uh, however, uh, the concave lens in recent years has become quite popular. Uh, it's very highly regarded for its sharpness and its contrast and has become something of a cult favorite here in Japan and other places. And in recent years, the prices of these things have just gone up you know, higher and higher and higher. Uh, this lens is quite unique because of its construction. Uh, in the old days when uh, they were manufacturing lenses uh, and experimenting with making larger apertures to be able to, I guess, uh, catch more light in darker situations, uh, they discovered a problem which was called chromatic aberration. And what this means is that these uh, large aperture lenses, which were able to gather a lot of light, were not able to focus colors all on the same plane, and the images suffered from color fringing. And if you look at some examples of uh, inexpensive uh, uh, lenses, especially telephoto lenses shot at large apertures, sometimes you can see red fringing on the images. And this is because it's not, you know, the, these lenses aren't able to focus the color red in the right place. Uh, it, it's, it's in the wrong place, and that's also a problem with the other colors, but uh, not so obvious with them. And it wasn't until uh, uh, glass manufacturers began using rare earths or other things in their glass that they were able to make uh, wide aperture lenses with less or no chromatic aberration. Uh, Canon introduced this uh, lens or this glass in their lenses in the F, I guess, 35mm F2 and some of their larger fast telephoto lenses. And this was called uh, rare earth uh, glass in Canon's literature and uh, what, what's more popularly known as thorium glass, which is kind of a, a radioactive substance. If you hold a Geiger counter up to one of these lenses, the Geiger counter will react to it, though it's not really enough uh, radiation to cause any kind of concern. It's not really strong enough to pass through a sheet of paper, so that gives you a kind of an idea uh, uh, how weak it is. But uh, it does make a big improvement on the optical quality of the lens. Uh, another thing which uh, thorium glass does to uh, these old lenses it, is it tends to discolor them over time. And this is seen as a, a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your point of view. It's seen as a good thing by some people because this yellowing of the glass adds contrast to uh, monochrome or black and white film. And it can make uh, color film images seem warmer. So a lot of people really love this effect and this is one reason why people like these lenses. 
Uh, but one problem with these lenses is, is the amount of yellowing in the glass varies depending on the age of the lens and how it was stored. Some of these lenses have no yellowing at all. Some of them have uh, moderate yellowing and some of them are deeply yellow. And uh, this particular one, uh, it's kind of uh, uh, hard to see here because I don't have much of a, a background behind it. But uh, uh, this color, has, this one has a very, I guess, um, golden color inside the glass. Uh, this, co this coloring of the glass, it's caused by, I guess, uh, I don't know if they call it degradation or whatever of the thorium inside the lens, but it's not a, a permanent thing. And if you, if you have a lens which is uh, so yellow that it's adding too much contrast or affecting the performance of the lens, the yellowing is quite easily removed by simply exposing the glass to sunlight or UV light. Uh, a lot of old lenses made in Japan use thorium glass. Uh, if you look at the older uh, I guess Olympus OM lenses, the first versions of the 35 millimeter, or excuse me, 50 millimeter f1.2 and f1.4. These often have a really gold cast inside them, but particularly in the front because they did utilize thorium glass in them. And it was also used by Yashica in their faster aperture lenses, uh, like the Yashica CC and the CCN, and some of the uh, Electro 35 series. Uh, the radiation is quite harmless, though some people seem to be frightened of these things and say that they would never own one. Uh, I've had one for a number of years, and um, so far, as knocks on wood, I have no uh, cancer yet. Uh, I really love these lenses, and it's because uh, of these lenses and how much I like them that I always have a couple of FD mount cameras. I have uh, this old F1, which I, is more or less permanently attached to this uh, lens and uh, yeah, which I really love. I plan in a future video to go out and shoot with this combination and uh, take some photos with it and show you uh, what these lenses are capable of. Uh, problems that these lenses have are usually related to fungus. Uh, unlike some of the other lenses like the f1.8 and f1.4, the, the 50 millimeter lenses, uh, which are prone to haze, uh, the haze is not a problem in the 35 millimeter f2 lens. Uh, I've never come across one of these uh, which has haze in it. I wish I could say that the same about the 50 millimeter lenses. But uh, the 35 millimeter f2 lens is very susceptible to fungus. And uh, this particular one, when I got it, I got it for quite a good price because it had lots and lots of fungus on the inside. Uh, usually the fungus is quite easy to remove uh, from one of these lenses. Usually the fungus is sitting in between the front and rear uh, lens element groups rather than sitting between the individual elements. And in most cases, maybe uh, 8 out of 10 times, you can remove the fungus by simply removing the rear lens element group. If you look at the rear lens element, you'll see two rings around it. There's an inner ring with uh, notches and an outer ring with notches. What you do is uh, attach a tool to the ring on the outer notches and simply turn the element uh, group out leftwards and the entire thing will come out and then that will allow you access to the front of the rear element group and also behind the front element group. Uh, the fungus is quite easy to clean up in these and uh, it, I, I rarely see a problem with the fungus etching the glass. The glass used in uh, Canon's rare earth lenses is quite high quality and seems to be better than the glass used in their 50 millimeter and many of their other uh, lenses. Uh, a difficult thing with these uh, lenses is when they have fungus behind the front element. Uh, that's quite a, a bit more difficult to remove. Uh, to clean out the fungus, you have to take off the lens nameplate. Then you have to take off the ring on the front, the filter ring, by removing the three screws around it. And then there's a retaining ring, which uh, fits on the front around the element. That has to come out. And then you can kind of slide or thread out the front element group depending on the, the version of the lens and how it's put together. And then you can remove the retaining ring for the front element, remove the front element, clean behind it, and then put it all back together. Uh, it's not a job for some, uh, I guess, the faint-hearted or someone who doesn't have a lot of experience uh, with working on lenses. But uh, yeah, fungus is not a fatal problem for the 35mm f2 lens as it is for other Canon lenses. It's not difficult to spot the concave lens. Uh, the most obvious thing is the concave design uh, of the front element. 
But sometimes when I see these for sale on eBay or other places, uh, the owner has the lens cap on it and you can't really tell by looking at the front if it's a concave lens or not. A surefire way to tell it's a concave lens is uh, to look for the chrome nose ring because the first variations all had uh, chrome nose rings and all chrome nose 35mm f2 lenses are concave lenses. Uh, the next thing to look for is the aperture range. On the 35mm uh, concave lens the minimum aperture is f16 whereas on the concave and new fd lenses it's f22. So you can't see the front of the lens, but you can see the aperture ring. If it's an F16, it's one of the concave lenses. And the last thing you can look for, of course, is yellowing uh, on the glass on the inside. So <clears throat> that's it for my video about the uh, Canon uh, 35mm F2 concave lens. Uh, if you're interested in buying one of these lenses, uh, uh, I, I often sell them at my Etsy and eBay stores and my new online store, japanvintagecamera.com. Uh, to see what I have available, uh, please check the description below the video. I plan to try to get more of these lenses in the future. I haven't uh, had any for quite a while because uh, uh, recently I haven't been able to find uh, so many. But uh, uh, I was lucky enough to acquire this one recently. And I've got my eyes on a couple more, so hopefully I'll have them available soon. Uh, I hope to, as I, I might have said earlier in the video, uh, to go out and uh, do some shooting with this lens and process and scan the film uh, to give you an idea of uh, what it can do. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to do that maybe sometime before the end of the month or early October. So uh, please check back if you can. Uh, if, you are, if you like this video and want to see more, uh, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.